Now, when Checkpoint first revealed there'd been life-shortening failures in the treatment of some urology patients at the Southern DHB, the exact numbers weren't known. Last night we revealed that there are currently 569 urology patients waiting longer than they should for assessment or treatment. Weekend mega clinics are being held to address that backlog. Today the DHB CEO confirmed to us that of those 569, 60 patients have now had biopsies and 50 of those patients do have cancer. In other words, 30 people who've waited longer than they should have by the Ministry of Health's own guidelines do have cancer. I asked Chris Fleming if he knows how many patients have developed more serious cancer or secondary cancer due to excessive wait times. No, look, I, don't, I do not have that information with me. Um, and um, as I, when we talked about the patients that were um, that that were waiting within the um, within that 90 day indicator. Um, of course, a number of those people were expected to uh, be reported, you know, come back with cancers. Um, but equally, um, they they are not they will not all be in that same category of the extent that that Mr. Hoffman has suffered. Well, with terminal secondaries. Yes. You said a number. Have you any idea what kind of number? What are we talking about here? Um, of the people that we have, um, of the of the biopsies that we had done, um, which I believe we have done about 60 biopsies in the la over the last few weeks that have been the extra ones, um, and the sorts of numbers of patients that have come back from that um, with a level of cancer is in the sort of 50% mark. Um, but as I, I do need to stress, though, um, that is that is not. Um, that they are not all patients to the extent um, that Mr Hoffman's uh, condition was. So you've done 60 biopsies, 60 roughly 50% of, yes. of them have come back with cancers, so that's roughly 30 patients. Yeah. Some but not all, but they are not all patients who are going to have to undertake um, urgent surgery or, and the like. There is um, more conservative treatment for many of them. Okay, but they are patients who all waited longer than they should have Indeed. for diagnosis. Absolutely, and um, we absolutely apologise for that. Uh, but that is the reason why, in the um, you know the, the great work that the urologists um, and being supported by Stephen Marks, um, the planning that's been undertaken, the whole point about um, uh, undertaking these um, uh, these mega clinics that we've announced is um, uh, there's some significant improvements in processes and practices that we need to undertake and. The recommendation that has been made to me and we've, we've accepted is we need to clear the backlog completely so that we can move forward in a sustainable manner, uh, manner um, uh, going, going into the future. Um, and that's why we're, really, we're delighted um, that we've got the support of urologists around the country. Um, you know, these mega clinics are going to involve at least 10 urologists coming into our district to provide the clinics over the weekend, as well as um, specialist nursing staff, um, and that we're going to actually be able to get on top of this once and for all. Chris, I just want to come back to that number. 30 people have been diagnosed with cancer. Yes. And they are all people who waited longer than they should have for their diagnosis. They are indeed. Okay. Um, and, and, at, and, and at the extreme end of that category, we have Steve Hoffman, who has terminal secondary cancer. Indeed. Um, and I, I am not aware of any in that category out of the, out of the biopsies that have been done recently. Um, and what I can give an assurance on is where the surgery is indicated um, as the right treatment for those patients. We are fast-tracking them and we are utilising private, private capacity as we need to. Fast-tracking being a relative term, given that it was a, a, a delayed prognosis. Indeed. Um, and uh, look, you know, I, 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 I guess I can't, can't say, I can't apologise more about the fact that the situation should never have arisen. Um, it has, um, and what I'm holding myself to account and uh, the wider team on is are we taking enough action quickly enough now to not only um, get, uh, address the problem but also make sure it doesn't happen again. Can you remind me again how it did happen? Um, look, it was multifactorial. Um, I think in terms of the the issues, um, you know, our processes and our practices within the service um, need need to be modernised. Um, there's clearly been some resourcing issues, and hence why we have 
um, um, signed off the recruitment of additional nursing and also SMO resource in Dunedin. There was divergence of practice across Dunedin and Southland. Um, they were operating as two separate teams and there was clearly tensions and issues between management and clinicians. Right. Doesn't the buck for that stop with you as CEO or with the Commissioner who was driven, and we have discussed this previously on Checkpoint, by financial KPIs? She was appointed by the Minister after he sacked the board to reduce the deficit. If there was a resourcing issue, shouldn't the Commissioner or the CEO go? No, look, I, I would... Uh, I, I would um um, sta I stand behind um, the commissioner and all, as, uh, why? My own why? 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 Do, why? 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 No. So, as so, as forgive me. Issue. Forgive me. This is a public health issue. I spoke yesterday to a man who was terminally ill, who developed a secondary cancer while he was waiting for treatment. He waited 11 months for surgery on his prostate. You have told me there are 30 people with cancer who waited too long for their diagnosis. At what stage does someone there say, this simply isn't good enough, the buck stops with me? Well, I, I believe the action. I believe that what we need to be accountable on is the actions we've taken once the ID issue has been identified. And I can assure you that the commissioner has uh, has. It does, Chris, me forgive me for interrupting. That doesn't work anywhere else in human life. So if I drive badly but do a jolly good job cleaning up the mess after the crash, that is not a mitigating factor. Well, I think one of the things that we're changing in the culture in this organisation is that we are not prepared to leave issues unaddressed. And the urology issue has existed for years. Um, it hasn't developed overnight. It hasn't developed over the last few months. And we, we are taking the brave actions of, one, being very open and public about it, um, and two, uh, seeking independent um, uh, input into it and as I've said we have accepted all the recommendations and we are going to considerable expense to address the issues not only in terms of backlog but also the sustainability of the service moving forward and that is despite the fiscal challenges of this organisation. The, f the um, fiscal challenges? Didn't that, well, that's despite the fiscal challenges. We are making the problem, the fiscal challenges of Southern DHB worse by the actions we're putting in, but it is the right thing to do. Money, no object. Um, I have, have money is no, uh, the, the money that has been requested of me um, to run these, run these clinics, as well as to recruit the extra urologist and the nursing staff have all been signed off. And what will, they, what did you sign off on? Um, it, it's, it's, it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and um, I believe that's a, a, an exceptionally small price to pay uh, to address this issue properly. That's Chris Fleming, CEO of the Southern DHB.